Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at a solo classic, Nemo's War, although specifically the new Ultimate Edition. And I was sent a review copy of this one. I've heard Colin and Steve from our team rave about this game for years. How did I feel about the solo play? Let's find out and get to the list. First at number five, I have a mix looking at the event cards and sort of the emergent story of the game. So at the beginning of the game, you see this big deck of event cards and they kind of control random events that might help or hurt you as the game progresses. And on the positive side, the variety here is great. The different effects you can face and bonuses you can gain. It can also give you different places to go to. And all this builds to a really nice emergent story, giving you a varied experience each time. And even the way the game ends, once you tally up your victory points, giving you kind of a little epilogue for how Nemo actually did. I think all of the sort of narrative touches in this game within the event cards and without is great. My only main complaint that brings it down to a mix, although leaning pro, is that the events can be so swingy, some being so terrible and some being so helpful, and this is a theme of the game, there's a lot of randomness, that sometimes I can feel like my plays are not as much in my hands as I would like. Like uh, in some games you'll get an event that has an ongoing effect for the rest of the game that is horribly harmful, and if you get that early, it's kind of like you've just ruined your entire roguelike run from the start. But I have a full-on pro for my number four. I love this. The game's got motives. In the Ultimate Edition, you have eight of them, and these play out like little scenarios you can use in each game. What is Captain Nemo going for? Does he want to be a pirate? Does he want to be an adventurer? Does he want to bring down the Imperialist powers? And these are nice because through pretty simple mechanics, they really change up the feel of the game, because what you're getting victory points for can change entirely. A lot of them add in different mechanics, like you use different tokens, or you can do different things, or some parts of a turn work differently. And then beyond the motives, they have so many little modules you can add in in the Ultimate edition. You can have uh, Nemo's son tag along. They have these little deadly seas that might change up what pops out of the ship bag. And yeah, overall, I just really appreciate the variety these bring to the game. But I mentioned ships a moment ago, and this is my number three, a mix, and that's managing the ships that pop out on the board. So at the beginning of each turn, after resolving the event card I already mentioned, you're going to roll some dice, and they'll spawn ships on the board. And if too many of them pop out, they'll get stronger and stronger, and eventually you'll lose the game. And on the positive side, this brings a lot of tension into the game. How much do you want to manage these ships? Combat itself is a bit of a crapshoot. Will you get damaged? And you're also balancing your notoriety, which mainly comes from destroying ships. How infamous do you want to become, and how dangerous do you want to make the ships that are attacking? you. But there are a few negatives for this one that bring it down to a mix for me. First, quite honestly, as a fan of the book, I don't love the theme because how are these random wooden and sometimes metal ships above the surface hunting down a submarine? But on the mechanical side, because managing these ships is so important in every game you play, it can take the great motives I mentioned and make them feel a little bit more leveled out and similar to each other, which I don't love. And also, I have to say, it is really anticlimactic when you're just about to get to the end of the game and see how your score is, and then you place one ship too many and lose. I just do not enjoy that at all. But I'm back to a full-on pro for number two, which are the skill tests you take in the game. And this is one that's usually a mix for me in these kind of games, because some of these tests can totally make or break your game if you fail to destroy this key ship, or if you fail to resolve this adventure that was going to get you a ton of victory points. But here's what makes the tests in Nemo's War so good. They have so many great choices in mitigation. First of all, before the roll, you can risk one or more of your resources, and based on where they are, they'll give you more of a bonus to the roll. But if you fail the roll, those will get damaged. You'll lose crew, you'll damage your haul. But then on top of that, they give you a bunch of characters that can give you bonuses to your roll and re-rolls to make sure those critical rolls still happen successfully. With all the randomness in this game, I still have not felt like I've been screwed by the test dice almost at all. It almost always felt like my choice. And I think that's really an achievement in a game with so much dice luck like this one. But dice come up again in a less positive way for my number one. This is a mix looking at the action economy and the actions you take on your turn. So let's start with the big negative, my least favorite thing about the game and those are the action dice. So when you roll the dice I already mentioned to spawn ships, the differential of the dice, the distance between the dice values, is how many actions you get for the turn. And <laughs> I hate this. I hate it. Don't get me wrong, the luck does tend to balance across the whole game, but still it just is not that much fun when through no fault of your own you get zero or one action multiple turns in a row and you just can't do anything and you just have to kind of like manage the enemy side of things and do almost nothing for yourself. That's just not cool. I gotta be honest, I wish Victory Point and Gone with a Dawn of the Zed style system, because it's from the same company, and tie the number of actions you get to the event cards. Harder cards give you more actions, bam, you got balance. I think it would have been beautiful, but they didn't do it. But all that being said, the pro side of this is that the actual action choices are delicious and tough and challenging. You tend to get so few, so each move is impactful. Each time you search for treasure,
treasure or attack an enemy ship. And when you get a string of good choices mixed with some good luck and you finally get a run where you get a ton of victory points and you're somewhat notable for your achievements, it feels amazing. So overall, if you're a solo player looking for an adventure game with tons of variety, lots of tough choices and tension, I think Nemo's War could be a big hit. I've really enjoyed my plays of it. But on the other hand, you might want to avoid this one if you are luck and randomness averse. Again, I love how the tests work, but all the other forms of luck, like the cards and the dice for the actions, I don't think that's the best. And also, honestly, I would avoid this one if you're not going to play it solo, because that is what it's designed for. They have a cooperative mode and a semi-cooperative mode and a competitive mode. I've played a couple of them. Uh, Nope, <laughs> not the best way to look at the game. Stick to solo if you're going to buy this. And we have a ton of playthroughs of this one on the channel. Like I said, it's one of Colin's favorite games, so click the link to see one of them. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.